So, Making It Monday is every Monday on Lizzie Curtis Facebook page at seven o'clock. So if you're ever unsure, it's always on Lizzie Curtis and it's always at seven o'clock unless there's an exception to the rule and something terrible has happened, like I've, I've had a late dinner or something. I'm gonna show you the project so far, just so you know, um, if you've got them all, okay? Now these, I know these are not in order, okay? I make no um, apologies for that because I can never remember, but you'll be able to see all the projects. So we've got the glasses case here, which has the little popper. And actually fact, these glasses fit in there and that, that I take those around with me everywhere. Then we have the little tiny baby shopping basket. Can you see? This was actually just before Christmas and we had these hanging from the Christmas tree. So that's the teeny weeny shopping bag. It's so cute, isn't it? It's tiny. Look, if I bring it up to me, it's quite tiny. There, see? <laughs> then we had the wallet. Now, actually, this is a folding purse, I think. I love this. And if I had more hours in the day, I would make more of these because it's literally one piece of fabric. So if you sort of start at the top here and if I sort of swizzle it around, it's all one piece. Um, and it's just this sort of loop that goes through there. And, I, and that's one of my favourites, I have to say. Then we did the little wallet, which is this one here. And that's to take maybe a gift card or something like that again it's just before christmas and if i undo it, it's got a little bell and i can never undo it but i'll give it give it my best shot there we go um there it is so that's the inside of it so we've got two big pockets here and then we've got a little pocket on the end so you could put a little treat in there if you want to and that was the the, the little wallet um, then we've got the scissor holder and in actual fact I use this all the time and normally this is full of scissors um, but that's just folded and that's courtesy of Karen so thank you for that pattern Karen and you can see that's where the scissors go if I can get my fingers in the right place and um, I really I really love making this because it's super easy and and it's very useful then we had the car tidy, which is this. I've seen so many of these made, they're amazing. Um, there's two little pockets at the front. You can make one if you want to, it's up to you. Um, and then you've got the big pocket inside and you could put another pocket in there if you want to. Now, um, I did get chastised a little bit for saying that it should go in the car and hang it from, I don't know, the, the handbrake or something. And it's like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So don't use it in the car, but use it on a door handle or somewhere where you need a place to put a quick bit of storage. It could hang from the bottom of the stairs and you can put bits and bobs in there. So um, quite honestly, it's actually a really useful thing. And you don't have to have the handle on it. You could make it into um, a proper little tote bag and put little handles on like that and do it as a little carry. That's up to you, but there's lots of things that you can do with these patterns. Then we had the heart sort of um, pot holder. So it's it's meant to sort of, you know, be, I haven't put Thermalan or anything in this because this is just a demonstration one, but you could do. Um, the, around the passenger headset, that's a head rest. That's a very good idea. Um, but that's the um, pot holder. So you might make one of those, make some for your friends as well. Then we did the shopping trolley cover or pram cover, or um, my dad's now got a walking frame, you know, that they, they help, helps him keep his steady because he's a bit wobbly. Um, so you could put that on there and it can be washed and actually it's, it's comfy. And of course it's not cold because there's no metal. You're, you're feeling fabric, which is gorgeous, of course. And then last week we made the little hand sanitizer case, which hangs from the, the handle cover. So we've just about got everything covered here. And it does make you wonder what else I can think up, but you know what? They just keep coming into my head and I get ideas and then um, I adjust them and make them sort of uh, my twist on things. So this week we're going to be making the little purse, which is this one. I've made two actually, there we are, I made that one for the pattern and that was the first one I made. And it's a what it's, it's actually a half circle but it makes a quarter circle purse and because it's got a boxy bottom here, um, it means that you've, you've got a bit of, it's like a wedge really and because of that we've taken some of that fabric away here. So it's not a perfect quarter circle, but it's because we've got a boxy bottom, okay? Now, I've got a D-ring here, a little tiny baby half inch D-ring there. And I've also got the swivel um, 
clasp on it as well, the lobster clasp. Now that's hanging from the zip, so you can pull that and open it up with the, the handle. But if you wanted to, you can take this off, if I can do that, and pop it onto the D-ring, do you see? And then you've got a little carry handle there if you want to, okay? And for a little one, they, they'd be able to get their hands through there. If you want to make it for yourself to hold, which you may or want, may not want to do, um, obviously you might want to make it bigger, so you could think about that. Or not have anything at all. You know, you don't have to have everything that I've said that you can do. Just have it maybe with the D-ring, or just have it as a little tag like that without the D-ring, okay? So whatever suits, whatever suits. So I'll just pop this back on again. And in fact, I'll put it on the zip because I quite like it on the zip. Um, I, it was like, oh yeah, it was like a bit of a eureka moment when I put that on there. So again, like I say, it just pulls down, easy peasy, and it's a really nice make. Now, um, this has a little bit of a twist to it in as much that it uses half a zip. Now, when I say half a zip, it literally is a zip pulled apart so you've got two halves now for anybody that goes oh, but what about the the other half well just put another slider on it make another make two um you get plenty of sliders on zips on a roll or you can buy uh spare sliders the sliders um that i need are a size three and they go with the crafters companion um zips on the slider uh, zips on the slider zip, zips on a roll but you may find something else there's tons on amazon ebay all of the usual places sometimes you just need to know what size your zip slider is or your zip teeth and these are number three which is pretty pretty generic um but they're much more useful to have zips on a roll than actually um zips that you buy independently and a lot lot cheaper um so never panic about using lots of zippage and then like we're going to do tonight split it in half it's like what <laughs> You will use it, I promise. Um, and actually, there's a make coming up uh, in a couple of weeks where you might need the other half. And I promise whatever I... In fact, it's going to be a little bit more than this. But anyway, whatever I um, make, I'll use the other half, okay, at some point. So we can have a bit of a chance. So that's your pattern for this week. And I'm actually numbering it now. So it says Project 11, Polly Pocket. Um, actually, our, our um, Audrey, she uh, she named it Polly Pockets. I needed a name for it. Um, and then I realised I had an actual pattern on my website called Polly Pocket. But this is Polly Pocket Purse, okay, so it's slightly different. Now, if I were you, when you print it off, don't bother printing that front page because there's a lot of um, ink involved with that. So don't, don't bother. But from there, you can print that. That could be your front page. And right on there, Project 11. I might, I might do that for you for next week while well, I put Project 12, obviously. And uh, this week, there are five pages to it. So you'd want to print pages two to five. And that way, you'll get all of the information you need. And you'll see from, from this that it's quite, it's quite clear. And actually, I've seen lots of these made already. So I know that some of my instructions are working. <laughs> I must admit, following a pattern isn't always that easy. Um, I totally get that. And sometimes we get a bit, little bit um, word blind. And, um, you know, reading it through sometimes um, doesn't make any sense until you actually put it together. Um, oh, Zips on a Roller on Special Offer on Hachanda this week. Um, okay, that's great. So Hachanda is the shopping TV channel. Uh, so hop along there if, you, if there's some sh Zips on a Roll. That's super. And uh, yeah, anything to save some money. So let's put the camera down onto the, the desk here and we'll start. Okay, otherwise we'll never get started. So I'm going to move the camera down, guys. I'm hopefully not going to cut you off. And we'll put it down on the desk there we go here we go i think we're we're about right um there might be lots of shadows and things as i've got my overhead lights on so what i've done already is cut out my pieces um now i know this is kind of upside down to you but i'm sure you'll be able to work it out so i've got this is my pattern piece that you'll get in the pattern um, and it tells you where to <clears throat> snip into here and to cut into there which we'll do in a sec so I've got my wadding already cut out here and I've also got my lining fabric and I've got my outer fabric. Isn't that dotty? Absolutely gorgeous. So while we've got the pattern piece on the wadding and I've just used a temporary fabric spray to actually um, 
I've, I've sprayed it onto my pattern piece and it's attached to my wadding temporarily and it helps me cut round. So that's a good top tip for you. So I'll just cut a little nick in there and you just need a little tiny V. So just cut that. I know I've got a big V, but you only need a tiny one. And then I'm just going to cut out my little rectangle here. And that will be the same for the lining and the outer. So if I cut that out, there we go. And if I just peel that away, there we go. So there's our piece that's got the piece, the little rectangle cut out. So now we do need to do the same for the others. Now, you might want to um, pin this before you cut it, um, but I'm just going to sort of risk it and go for it. Um, and now I cut this out with a rotary cutter, so it's not desperately accurate, but I'm, I'm not too worried. Don't tell anybody, but I'm not too worried. So I'm just cutting my V out just to mark the top. There we go. And then I'm going to turn it so it's good for me. Make sure those stay in place. And by all means, pop a pin in um, just to make sure that all those layers stay together. OK, so you can either pop it through the paper or just through all of the fabric. And then just keeping your hand there so they all stay in one place. Let's just snip out the, the rectangle. There we go. Right. Take the pin out. And there we are. There's our pieces done. So I don't need that pattern piece anymore. So there's that's ready to go. And all I need to do is if I spray this piece of wadding... And then I'll put my, so this is just a temporary fabric spray and there's loads available. Go on to Amazon or it's my favourite place, I'm sorry, but it is. Um, or anywhere, just, just or go, go into Google and type in temporary fabric um, adhesive and you, there'll be loads that will come up. Um, but I use the one that I can get most uh, readily to me. So you choose yours. So I've put the wadding on the back of there, so that's all good to go. So that's that one, and there's my lining. The first thing we need to do, though, is to, we need to do the little tabs. So um, there's my long piece, which is, um, I think from memory, it's eight. Let's have a look at the instructions. Eight by two and two and a half by two, okay? And where we've got this being, it's the two inches that we're going to keep on the ends. We're going to fold in the wider parts. No, no, we're not, we're going to do it that way. I do beg your pardon. <laughs> we're going to fold it in. I'm going to get right in a sec. We're going to fold it in that way. So we've got the two short ends here, and this is the two and a half. Two short ends here, and this is the eight, okay? Now, I think I've shown this quite a few times now, how we do this method of the um, the straps. And this really is a great method to learn for any sort of straps that you make, okay? Um, and of course you can put in stabiliser if you want to, or you can just leave it bare fabric like I have. So fold your little piece in half, give it a press, okay? Then what you're going to do is fold that first edge to the middle and that crease line that you just made is your guide that's where your raw edges are going up to and I wish I could zoom it in but I can't so you can see what that looks like there then I'll turn that round and I'll bring my raw edge up to meet that other raw edge and I think you'll find the instructions are quite clear about that so let me just open that up so you can see and I'll bring that in so you can see what that looks like and then you're just literally going to fold again and that gives you a half inch strip. Because we started off with two inches, it gives us a half inch strip. So that's ready for top stitching, which I'll do in a sec. So now we're going to do the same with this piece. So just do our lovely crease in the middle and that's just our guide, as I said. Um, if you want to go free rain and just go put your long edges to the middle straight away you do that you do that I'm not saying that what I'm doing is uh, is what you should do I'm just saying this is what I do <laughs> right so that's one edge folded I'm and I'm doing this um, sort of not too I'm not pressing down on my iron too much because first of all this iron is it gets extremely hot and even I haven't got it on full at all 
and I've got a wool mat underneath which reflects the heat. So I, I don't want to burn my fingers, which I will. So that's exactly the same. Look, you can see that's all I've done, exactly the same. And now I'm just folding to the middle. So again, exactly the same as what I did before, except it's a longer piece. Oh, and I'll tell you what else we've got to do. We've got to fold over one end. Okay, now in the instructions it says that. Um, it's one, two, third, third instruction along. It says about folding this end over. So the best thing I can suggest is that you use uh, quilter's tape. Um, the wash away one is, is ideal. Um, but there's you can get two different sorts, um, but this, this wash away is fine. Um, so you have a paper side and a glue side. So pop your sticky side down, your glue side down onto your fabric like so. Okay. Um, and then all you're going to do is just peel that away. So you're taking the top layer of paper off. Let me show you what that looks like. So there's your glue just there. Okay. And then you're just going to fold it over. And that makes a really, really lovely, neat edge. And it sticks it, so you don't have to worry too much. And then all we're going to do is fold in half. And if you've got raw ends showing, then just um, trim, the, trim them away, or you know, you can fiddle with that to make sure that it sits okay. Let's just try that again. There we go. And you can keep one end um, raw edge. We, we don't need to worry too much. You've got to remember, you're just making a little purse. This is not going to be exhibited at uh, the V&A. So don't beat yourself up about anything. Okay, so we've done our two little pieces. So we're going to top stitch now. I'm going to bring the machine in. I've got my regular foot on there. And I, actually, this time I've got red thread, which is absolutely incredible that I have matching thread. I don't normally. So... <laughs> What we're going to do is just top stitch these. You could put this on a, a longer stitch length. I usually go for about three when I'm top stitching, but you might want to stick it and um, keep it on um, two, and a, two and a half, which is usually what your machine is set up with. Um, so there's one side. So just do a couple of stitches across. Keep your needle down. I have got an automatic needle down thing with this machine, but um, it's a bit sticky. Um, so I tend to leave it off. Uh, it's just out of service, but it's still sticky. Um, so there's one side done. I'll show you when I've done. So now I'm going to do this side. Now, I just want to make sure I'm doing this right because I did this a certain way before and I think, I'm, yeah, I'm fine. So let's just pop that through. And so we're going down the long side now. And I'm just going to go across the end where I fold it so it's nice and neat and then come back on myself. There we go. I try to keep that very <laughs> straight. Sometimes it's not easy. There we go. One more stitch just to sort that out. And take that off the machine. There we go. You're a little bit far away, aren't you, really? Don't know if I can get in any nearer or try. Hopefully you can see okay. And so now what we've got is, let me just get rid of this little bit of thread here. All right, let's just hold that up to you. I'll put it on my mat because it's much easier. There we go. So you can see what that looks like now. So that's it top stitched. So now what we want to do is put the little tiny D ring on there. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this bit. OK, this is the D ring. So you're just threading it through. There we go. That's what it looks like when it's threaded through. OK, and then you're just going to baste across the, the raw edges just to hold those two ends in place. So let's just pop that under the machine. I'm trying to get keep those raw edges lined up. Sometimes it's difficult to do that, but you I mean you could put a pin in there if you want to, but I'm always a little worried about getting pins um, near your needle of your machine. You don't want to um, break a needle, your, your machine needle, it's just not fun. So we've just top stitched that, so I'll just bring that in so you can see what that looks like. Okay. On this part, we're going to make it so we've got that loop 
and uh, so all we're going to do is we're going to pop the I'm just going to check the one that I made just to make sure I'm talking sense so we're just going to pop the one end through I'll pop the raw edge through it doesn't matter which really and all I'm going to do is bring these together and I'm just going to sort of fold this around so it's nice and neat um, and then I'm just going to top stitch those together okay so I'm going to do it like this I'm, I'll have to put it down just for a moment and you're literally folding it back on itself like that so let me try and hold that so you can see what that looks like um, so there's the raw edge yep you see that just there and all I'm doing is bringing that folded edge over and I'm going to top stitch that so it gives a nice neat finish okay you could try other ways of doing this and you might find it, it um, is quite thick for your machine so see how you get on with that but I'm going to go across okay and then I'm going to leave the needle in and then I'm going to go back I'm going to try and do that with without and make sure you can see so I'm going back and that's all I'm doing and that will secure all of those layers together um, and obviously you want to just um, neaten your threads off okay there so that's given us that sort of look let me try and get it so you can see it um, and it's a nice neat finish and it's also a natural sort of puller as well you can just sort of hold on to that and pull your piece so and until I've finished I'm going to clip those two together and keep them safe okay so the next thing we need to do is to actually put the clip which I've, which I've just realized you don't need to keep safe at all because we're going to now stitch it but I'll put the other one there so I don't lose it and um, we're going to actually stitch that to the inside of our purse so if I pop that there I'll pop it so it's upside down this is where I made the little V just there and I'm just going to put my tag just like that okay and you could put a clip there but as soon as we put it under the machine that clips going to come out but if I clip it then show you so clip let's see get it straight there we go <clears throat> so you can see what that looks like it's sort of right sort of dead center to your rectangle and it's going into the little purse okay it's going into the little purse and it's right on top of the V that you cut out right at the beginning so we're just going to top stitch that in place and it's just um, an eighth of an inch and you don't need to back stitch it's just literally okay it's a bit like having a, um, a stitched pin really because it just holds it there and we don't have to worry about it <clears throat> and that's what it looks like okay so the next thing is the zip guys so you don't get excited it's just a regular zip so there's our zip on a roll it's, there's our slider at the end there and all I'm going to do is take the slider off oh okay there we go <laughs> so the slider is now off there it is and I'm just going to split that zip in half okay so we'll use that other half another time so there is half a zip and we do this method quite a lot on some of the pouches that I've made on the website. So what you're going to do now is you, I would suggest you do one layer at a time. You could do the lining at the same time. It certainly will save a lot of time, but let's just take things easy and we're going to do one piece at a time. I'm changing my foot out to a zipper foot. Don't be afraid of your zipper foot. They are absolutely invaluable, okay? Because they will allow you to go right up to the teeth of the zip, okay? Um, and it, they're, they're great. If you use a regular foot, you'll, you might have a little bit of bother. So what we're going to do is right sides together. So let's have a look. This is your right side of your fabric. I think you know that. The right side of your zip is the bit with the teeth okay so if I bring that right in whoops that's the right side that you can see with the teeth and that's gonna go um, right side down onto your fabric okay so on the other side all you see is tape you don't see any teeth so just remember that it's um, the teeth are going to go face down to the right side of your fabric okay and leave a tail of inch inch and a half 
you should have plenty. So let's just get that lined up. Now you might want to pin this, guys. I appreciate you might want to pin this. Put your clips in, whatever it takes to make you comfortable, okay? But all I'm going to do is follow my zip, my zip teeth, okay? Now I wonder if I can get you lower down here and in a bit. There we go. Excuse all the wriggling. I don't know which is best for you, but let's just leave it there, okay? Um, hopefully you'll be able to see quite well. So all I'm doing is lining up the edge of my tape to the edge of my, my purse, the raw edge. And I'm just following all the way around, taking my time. Um, you, could, you could, if you wanted to, and let's do it, keep it so your, your needle stays in, so it sort of holds your zip, a bit like a third hand. And slowly make your way round. Now, obviously, if you make this bigger, it will be easier because you've got a bigger curve, okay? Um, this is only a little purse, so it's quite a tight curve, but you shouldn't have any bother. You really shouldn't have any bother. So just follow it round. Try to keep your raw edge to the edge of the tape over your little... Um, D-ring. Now my, my machine, as beautiful as it is, hates layers. In fact, it hates everything pretty much. It hates zips, it hates layers. <laughs> but it's got a great zipper foot. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? It's a great little machine. I've got others. I don't know why I don't use them. I'm just laughing because it's so silly. Anyway, um, <laughs> follow your tape around, okay? And you should have a nice big piece at the end. There we go. And just carry on. And break your threads. Okay? Let's do it like that. So have a, have a little look, because I did go off a little bit there. There's a, there's a bit there that I'm not, really not happy with, but I'm going to ignore it. Uh, so I followed it all the way around. Now, if you wanted to, because you'll see how this zip curls. Do you see that? Well, you could snip into the zip tape to get it to lie flat. But I, I sh Abigail says she's going to take my machine off me. <laughs> I don't think so, love. Um, <laughs> that's my daughter. Um, so you could snip into your zip zipper tape to actually let it lie flat. But once it goes inside your purse... It'll, it'll lie perfectly fine. Um, you could steam that to get it so it lies really flat. I, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. But so far, that's what it looks like. It's not bad, is it? We've made a good start. So now you've got to put the lining in. Please don't panic. Let's just get it so it's the right way around. So the lining. So we're actually going to put the lining right sides to our fabric. Now, obviously, my lining doesn't have a right side or a wrong side. But trust me, if you were to use, say, this polka dot as a lining, that obviously is the right side, and that goes right side down onto the outside of your purse, okay? And you're going to stitch that all over again. Now, two things you can do. You can either stitch it like this, where you've got the two layers, and quite honestly, you're kind of stitching blind because your zip is inside. Yep, it's inside the layer. There we go, if I lift it up put it down, it's inside the layer. But if you flip this over, what you've got, can you see, you've got this guideline. This is your first stitching line with your outer fabric. So what I suggest you do is make sure that your lining and your little outside purse are right sides together. And I would follow this. I, this is your guide. This is your guide. OK, now your zipper foot will not let you jump over the teeth, so you mustn't worry about that. So let's get this put together. So I'm just going to literally going to trace my line. Now you could do it so it's absolutely dead on the line or you can go a little bit inside. I'm not going to top stitch the purse. You can do, but I'm not going to. Um, I'll show you when we're done how you can do that. Just make sure your zipper tape is lying flat underneath. But you're literally now, oh, I can't see the zip, can't see my lining, 
but I'm literally tracking what I've just stitched. And then as you're, <laughs> as you're doing this, you can see how, how rubbish I cut my wadding. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and how rubbish perhaps my seam allowance is. But I'm literally going over my, my same stitches. Um, as best I can. I'm not worrying too much about it. So coming back to the beginning, there you go. Take it off the end. Got some uh, knotted, uh, nested threads there. I had a bit of trouble with this machine actually before the live. And uh, I thought then, hmm, I'm not sure about you. But I could easily change it to another machine. So if I bring it back up to the camera, I want you to have a quick look because some of that stitching is on the line and some of it, I think you can probably see, I wriggled a little bit. But that's good for you to see that because you can see then I, I've stitched it twice. So um, yeah, that's all you need to do, okay? Um, if you want to, you can clip. There's, um, you know, I'll leave that for you to decide. I'm really, really not going to bother, but you could. So then we can turn it through, just have a little look at it. <clears throat> and you can see how glorious it looks. And you might want to press it at this stage, okay? Because it's flat, because it's beautifully flat, um, you could press it. And so all of this becomes just delicious and crispy okay if you know me you know crispy is the word um while we're there we'll just trim whoops we'll just trim some of these threads away <laughs> oh dear i was watching a fishing program the other night and that's what they did with their lines they flip flip them out of the way um <laughs> but look if i lift this up you can see where i've stitched and you could top stitch this if you want. Okay, I don't think I did with mine. I'm just going to check. No. Oh, I did with this one. Let me show you. I did with that one. Look, I top stitched. So you can see. Right. So press it, top stitch it. That's that's all done. But now what we've got to do is actually put the zip slider back on again. So this is where you need to concentrate, guys. And I can almost guarantee that when I do this, it will go horribly wrong for me because I'm trying to do it so like I'm showing you, but I'll do my best. What you wanna do is make sure that both of your zip ends are the same length, okay? So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna trim that off so it's the same length. And I would, for the moment, as you're, if you have never done this before, I would keep these at an inch long because that gives you an opportunity to keep trying if you, if you don't at first succeed, all right? So I'm just gonna trim that back, okay? And in the pattern it says, on the right side, let me just make sure I'm going to tell you right. So, <laughs> so that's what it looks like. I wonder if I can get my camera around a little bit better. I'm just going to move you guys, so please bear with. And if I wriggle, I apologise, but it's the best thing I can do to help you with this. And I'll just make sure you don't fall off the edge of my desk. There we go. So now you can see you've got the zip equal pretty much um, and your seams are pretty much lined up now look when you when you go to do this next bit if your um, seams here don't match up and your eighth of an inch difference and this could well happen to me then please don't worry about it just carry on because if you've got the zip slider on my goodness me you've done really well so what we're going to do and if you look at the pattern it will show you that that little piece of the teeth on the zip has been cut away so okay do that so let's just put it down so I can cut it and you're just cutting away a little bit okay I've kind of exaggerated it a bit but I want you to have a look what that looks like okay you can see quite clearly I've cut a bit away so what you're going to do is on the zip slider, it has a fat end. It also, I don't know why it looks like a frog to me, but on the fat end with the, the opening is wider than the back, you're just gonna slip that onto the left-hand side and take it down to about here, okay? And I'll do that, but I need to do it so it's comfortable for me, okay? So you're sliding that on. And like I say, with all of these things, they might, it might take a little while for you to do. Please don't think that this is, I, I've been doing this for years and even I still sometimes struggle. So 
please just keep at it and try with a spare bit of zippage before perhaps you make the purse up. So we've slid on the left hand side and that's always the easiest bit. OK, the next bit is to get this part on. Now, look, if I put this on as it is now, that that's not going to match up at all because this, the zip slider only goes the first one or two little nylon loops. So I'm going to take my zip slider back up a little bit. OK, not much, about there, let's say. And all you're going to do, and this might be easier if we turn it the other way around, but we're going to slide the zip teeth in and you're going to catch both ends with your thumb and finger of your left hand and then you're just going to pull, OK? And like I said, if I can do it, um, it's probably easier this way around where I've moved it. There we are. Now, that's interesting. I thought this is, you've got to see this. <clears throat> So look, can you see my seams are absolutely out? If they were about an eighth of an inch out, I wouldn't bother. But that's ridiculous. That's half an inch. So look, I'm going to be really brave and I'm taking that off again. OK, so, and it's good. It's good, good, good that we're doing this. So let's just take that zip slider up a little bit more. Oops, not that far, that about like that. And the reason why I'm telling you to do an inch is because this, if you try too many times, it'll get really frayed. And you can see it's a little bit frayed now. So we could trim that back and start again, all right? So that's why I'm saying keep it as an inch. So again, we're just going to put that little bit of the slider in. It won't go very far, I promise you. Just poke it in. Sometimes it clicks and sometimes it doesn't. Hold on to the end, both ends. You might want to turn it round and then pull. There we go. That's not bad. In fact, that's absolute perfection. I couldn't have wished for anything better. I mean, all right, my, my wadding's a little bit in the way. So let's just trim that back. It's, well, it's all stitched in, but you can see what that looks like. So it might be easier if you turn it and hold those ends there and then pull. Now, I can repeat that. I'll do it on another bit of zippage if you want me to. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. So that, that's fine. I mean, it's like, yeah, that's absolute perfection. So now we've got our zip actually working. Look, it's, it's perfect. It's super. We could put the, um, we could put the other little, um, sort of handle thing on if we wanted to do now, but I think it'll just get in the way. So all we want to do now is open your zip up. It's like anything that you make. You've got to keep that zip open. All right. Because I tell you what, this, this zip is a little stiff, I have to say, unless it's catching in my, my, my lining, it might well be. Let's see. But open that up. This is where pressing and a top stitch absolutely works. So I might have to eat my words and top stitch, but we'll leave it for the moment. And so you're going to open it up so it's all, so the zip, so you've got some space to turn through, basically. And then we're going to turn it inside out. Okay. So let me move you away a little bit now because you'll still see, but you're just moving you away just a wee bit. So open it up and you're gonna split the lining from the outside, okay? You're just gonna split it. In other words, you're just going to sort of pull it out. Okay, so you have it so it looks like that. Zip in the middle, okay? Um, I can't explain that any other way is that you separate the layers, all right? So you've got the lining one side, the outer, the other. So I'm just going to change my foot to my regular foot. Let's make sure that clips on. There we go. That's it. And let's move that needle back over to the middle. That's it. Lovely. So, and it tells you quite clearly, there's a picture in the instructions about this. On the, on the outside fabrics, on the wadding part, Let's just move you up a little bit because you're a little bit out of the picture there. There we go. So on the outer part, yep, pinch that together and you're going to stitch all the way along there over the zip and you're going to stop about, about an inch away from the zip on the lining. You're going to trim that away in a sec. You're going to leave a turning gap. You're coming down to the other corner bit <laughs> and you're going to stitch about an inch there all right or you could start from there and, and go around the other side which is what we'll do might as well as it's in my hands 
So, quarter of an inch seam allowance again. Just get those rectangles on top of each other nice and neatly. I'm going to hold my thread. Do a little back stitch, not much, because we're going to stitch on there in a second. Um, about an inch back stitch, break the thread. So hardly anything, but you know, it's all got to be done. Leave a gap of, I don't know, two and a half inches maybe. I'm not measuring. But I can show you if you want me to. Little back stitch again, and then we're just we're going to come straight over the zip. Now that zip can go either way. The zip teeth can either point out or they can point in. You decide. You decide. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, I'm sure there'll be some rules somewhere that somebody will kindly be telling me. But be careful when you go over the zip teeth because they are sitting on top of each other and they could break the needle of your machine. Coming up to the corner, a little back stitch, and we're done. I'll show you what I've done so you can see. So let's do it so it's like that, okay? So you can see, that's where I finished. Come all the way along there, over the top of my zip. I've gone about an inch, inch and a quarter into the lining, stopped there, left a gap, tiny gap, might have to open that up a bit, and I've stitched about an inch there, okay? So now I'm just going to pinch those corners. We're boxing the bottom, ladies and gents. We're boxing the bottoms. So all you're doing is um, opening up those corners. If, I'll do it because obviously you may not have seen that before. So that's what it looks like. You see those Vs? One V one side, one V the other. Just get them so you, you kind of split them open. Okay? Um, and those Vs, if I can do it, are going to be the start and end of your, your seam going across there okay so I'll just put it under the machine and uh, this is the lining but make it neat so do a back stitch make it strong um, this could hold lots of coins which need to be strong so keep it keep it nice and neat and then the same with the other end we're just going to split that those V's apart and then we're just going to stitch across there okay quarter of an inch. Does that make sense? Um, if I cut that, it'll look, look a bit neater. And we can pretend that I did that beautifully. There you go. <laughs> so, quarter of an inch, nice back stitch. There we go. Lovely. Trim those threads, even though, they're, even though they're going inside the lining, it doesn't matter. Keep, try and keep it as neat as you can, and we've gone straight across. Okay, Nancy says, is this bag big enough or this purse big enough to take your mask in? Well, I suppose it depends on what your masks are, uh, how big they are. I've got some really super embroidered ones, which absolutely would not go in there. <laughs> right, trim off your, um, your zip. I'm going to use my paper scissors and just trim that because that's a lot of um, a lot of stuff we don't need to be sitting inside. And then just turn it through. So find your turning gap, which I must admit, oh, it's not too bad. Oh, actually, let's just, let me just catch that because I think I missed the, missed the lining a little bit there, which actually is quite handy because I'll make it a little bit bigger, my turning gap. So, good things. Good things happen. <laughs> so, need to know your threads. There we go. So there's my turning gap. Don't forget, we left the zip open, guys. So we always, if there's a zip, keep it open. Part way, you don't have to do it uh, um, all the way. So this is where, if you don't leave a big enough turning gap, you'll struggle. And please don't struggle. Just make a bigger turning gap. There's no laws about turning gaps. Not that I'm aware of. You can bet anybody will make one up, but at the moment I don't think there is. So at the moment we're looking at the lining, so I'm just poking those out. I'm keeping it nice, keeping it neat. Now, of course, at this point you could actually stitch your turning gap closed. If I can get some of this out of the way. So I could just get in there and actually neaten this up. You'll very rarely catch me stitching a turning gap because sometimes it's, it's, um, it's a waste of time when you're doing um, a demonstration. 
And I always say, <laughs> I'll do that later. And of course, you know what? I never do. So pop it onto your machine. Do a back stitch. Well, my machine's decided not to do a back stitch, which is fine. I, I love this machine, but by golly, it's temperamental. I haven't got these lined up very well, so I'm not going to do much of a gap. I'm not, I'm not going to top stitch that much because I'm going to alter that in a minute because I haven't got these lined up. So never mind. <laughs> Turn it through. <laughs> Turn it through. Now, you see the end there? That's going to be really, um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of zippage, there's a lot of warding, there's a lot of fabric, there's a lot of seams, there's a lot of all sorts of stuff. <coughs> so, poke it out as best you can. Um, nobody's going to judge you on what that looks like, okay? The other thing to remember, and like I said to you before, give that a good press because as you noticed before, I think my lining got stuck in my zip slider. And that's why it didn't want to move very well. So I'm going to be really careful. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to even do it because I can see that lining moving. So I'm going to give that a press in a minute um, and just to make sure that lining behaves. You can see how it's sort of ruffled up. So top stitch is good. Um, and you'll have time. You'll have time. Um, but do it when it's flat. OK, don't do it when like me, just rushing along and um, because now you, you absolutely could not top stitch that bit there. Look, you just couldn't watch it. Watch it. You couldn't stitch it. So do it when it's flat. Yeah. So do, do as I say, not as I do, guys. So. <laughs> right. So let me take you back up a bit. Oops. Sorry. And I'm going to bring you back up. My phone is so hot. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Gave you a little bit of a fright there. Sorry, whoops. It's just, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right, there we are. I think, I think we're okay, I think we're okay. So, while I'm just finishing this off because what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it an iron. You don't need me. You don't need to see. I know. I know. I'm sorry, Karen. I dropped you. <laughs> it's, it's, and, I, and, and I haven't even had my, my little tipple of sherry this evening. So um, where's the other one? I've got my little my little hanger here that I'm going to attach. But I, I really want to iron my and my purse because I, it, honestly it's struggling with that lining so tell that lining who's boss now I know you can't see but I'm just ironing guys so I'm just trying to move that lining out of the way and, and like I said a top stitch is always good now I hope you've managed that zip um, leave a comment with me on here if you haven't managed that the, the main thing for me is that it's a Facebook Live, which means that you can just watch it later. Rewind that little piece again. If you're watching on YouTube, just rewind that little bit and watch it again and pause it, freeze frame it, because um, it'll make a huge difference um, with you being able to do this. And once you've mastered it, because at first you'll say, oh, I, I absolutely, oh, thank you for my stars, Jackie. Uh, once you've um, mastered it, once you've realised how you hold it and how you pull it, um, you'll you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, and then you can do lots of other things that we're going to do. Um, I'll show you in a sec. So look, I've given it an iron now. <laughs> and my zip works beautifully, of course. But it works much better if we put the little loop on so look you see how easier that is and of course the lining is looking just utterly gorgeous but of course you can just top stitch it and make it even more gorgeous in fact you know what I'd be tempted to top stitch that in white that would look amazing wouldn't it or a fancy stitch but it's quite a nice little make and if you're if you're a new stitcher if you made some of these and give these away how do you think that will make you feel I'll give you one guess, and that is it will make you feel super. Um, 
Jackie says to make sure your zipper is the right, right way up. Absolutely. You just remember, look back on this video and pause bits that you're not sure about. Pause it and look at it and try to study it and try to get it. And you'll realise that most things are most things are right sides together okay if you just have that mantra in your head then you can't go wrong but there we are so we've got three now yeah okay so what i'm going to do is the one that i made for the pattern which is glorious because it's my beautiful french fabric i'm going to give this away so on the facebook live i'm going to pick a name from the comments and i'm going to give this away so i thank you for, for commenting and this is just for the Facebook Live, okay? So, um, the similar one that we're going to make is, let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is, <laughs> not too far away. And this will be in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Um, this is a couple of weeks' time. We're gonna make this, okay? Now, you see that? That's that, except it's on the fold, okay? So remember we had the little cutout just there with my finger is um, we, we, it's just a circle so if I open this up it's just a circle okay so it's the same pattern but on a fold now I could just leave you to do that okay it's a it's a half a zip again so don't forget I told you if you once you've mastered it there's lots of other things you'll be able to do and this is one of them um, and you can make this into a little pouch if you wanted to. If you um, cut it um, so there's a seam allowance here, actually that could be where your zip is and you could have that as your seam, okay? But we'll cover that in a couple of weeks' time. What we're going to make next week, more zips I'm afraid guys, we're going to make these. These are gorgeous. These are a lovely little pouch, again very similar to the purse, got a tiny little boxy bottom there both sides and we've got a zip going across and this is gorgeous okay and I made this with my gold ladies a couple of three weeks ago so they they got to see it first which of course they should um, but we're going to make one of those next week okay so apart from the zip there's really not much to it um, this is another one I made at my lovely French fabric again do you see I top stitched that one <laughs> And what I'll do is next week is I'll give this one away, okay? Um, and we'll do it as a, as a giveaway every week. I think that'd be nice. Because I have to make two or three of everything to do, make up the, the, the first sort of initial one, make sure it goes together okay, then make one for the pattern, and then make one with you guys. So I usually have about three of everything, which is, which is fine, isn't it? Fine. I've got plenty of people I can give them to. So that's going to be next week's make, okay? And like I say, if you join me and you comment on the Facebook Live, then um, you'll be able to have a chance of winning that. So um, just as a quick reminder then, a bit of a recap, Making It Monday with Lizzie Curtis is always on my Facebook page on a Monday night at seven o'clock. If you're watching on YouTube and you want to be a little bit ahead of the game, then um, it's going to be always on Lizzie Curtis Facebook page at seven o'clock on a Monday. And the patterns are always free. I have to put them as 50 pence, which is such a small amount of money, but I have to do that because they're part of a shop. So I have to charge money because my website is a shop. Um, so uh, all you need to do is put free in the coupon box at the bottom left hand side and then it comes up as free. If you want to pay me 50p, that's fine, but PayPal take 30 32 pence of it so I end up with 18p I think but yeah if you do that that's fine so don't forget next week is going to be project 12 so this is project 12 we won't do this half circle one until a little bit further into February I'll give you a break from zips I think I've got another couple of other projects that don't have zips um and uh, yeah, so I don't know what's for what's 13, but that's going to be 12. OK, so I will look at the Facebook Live afterwards and I will find a name and, and send that all out. I'll send that out to one of you. Thank you very much for watching. I think we had um, the most amount of people watching so far. Oh, thank you, Rachel. That's very kind of you. If anybody sent me stars, um, 
earlier on throughout, um, I wouldn't have seen them because my phone was right down, so I couldn't see anything on my screen, and I didn't see anything on my on my Facebook Live. So um, just just so you know, but thank you anyway. I I really appreciate it. Audrey, you have done zips. I've seen your zips. They are fabulous. So never mind. Oh, thank you, Kath. I got more stars. I wonder if I've got more than Abigail. I should be checking. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I absolutely love doing these because we get together for a bit of a chat and um, it's kind of like a break from the norm, isn't it? Where the norm isn't norm anymore. Um, and to be perfectly honest, we really have to think about what day it is when we wake up, do you? And I still think Sunday mornings are for lions. And do you know what? Any day is now a lion, pretty much. Um, if, you, if you happen to be working from home, I know it's difficult children difficult but at least you can have a bit of a slower start to the day anyway wishing you lots of love and hugs stay safe if you offered the jab take it and uh, um, and I hope you enjoy this so don't forget you can look back at it anytime it'll be on YouTube tomorrow okay night night everybody sleep tight and stay safe